Three years ago, in October 2011, I tried to kill myself. I almost succeeded. When I got out of the hospital, the only reason I didn't try to kill myself again those first few months was because of my best friend. Him being there for me literally saved my life. But I hurt him so much, he left me in the end, and it completely tore me apart. Every day, I still wish that I could tell him how sorry I am and that I hope he's found happiness. This is the story about my suicide attempt, losing my friend, and learning to live again. The Heart of the Black Fire Phoenix How many times was the phoenix reborn? Time after time, life after life. Nothing could destroy it, nothing could keep it down for good. It would always rise from the ashes again, joyful and glorious. But eternity is a long time to live, and immortality can become a curse. Lifetime upon lifetime the pain built up, until the day the phoenix dove into the ocean. Reborn, it was made of black fire. Angry, afraid, and in pain, it burned across the world. Beautiful to behold, but leaving nothing but destruction behind it. All it wanted was to protect the one thing it still treasured, but everything it did set the world on fire anew. Its body and soul were black, devoid of color and life, but its heart was a pure white blaze encased in crystal fire. Buried deep within, it was the only reason the phoenix still lived. Without it, the phoenix would cease to exist. Painfully bright, the crystal would give light where there was none, but the phoenix, too afraid to lose it, kept it locked away. Something so beautiful became twisted, as joy warped to agony and hope to despair, and the warmth of love was pain in the cold that was the dark flame. And then the words came, and the crystal fire shattered. The phoenix screamed and plummeted toward the earth. No longer black, it burned with all the colors that had been trapped within. It felt both pain and relief that the end was finally near. It closed its eyes and held safe the last shard of its heart. Though it too would be destroyed, the phoenix no longer felt fear. It was ready for the end of this lifetime, even knowing the most painful one was yet to come. But the agony of the crash was worse than the phoenix could ever have imagined. Instead of burning out, the fire raged relentlessly. It blazed out of control, destroying everything the phoenix once called itself. The inferno consumed the phoenix's mind. It retreated to the furthest part of its consciousness, terrified. It saw its body and soul twisted and shattered before its eyes. The difference between life and death blurred. There would be no ending or new beginning this time. The pain became the entirety of the phoenix's world. It could only watch helplessly, unable to move or think anymore. There was no escape from the agony in either wake or sleep. It curled in upon itself, endlessly crying as its soul slowly burned away. Eventually, the fire became ashes upon the earth. Black coal dust still flared in painful fire sometimes. The shard of crystal fire lay buried, hollow and empty. Lifeless, the phoenix remained forever trapped and lost between worlds. Yet fate is inevitable, and once again the phoenix rose from the ashes. Insubstantial and ethereal, it was made of mere memories and dust this time. It was still linked to its crystalline heart, despite it being no more than a sliver of glass. It could not leave, could not move on, nor did it want to. It drifted in place, unaffected by water or wind. Staring at the distance without seeing, it felt nothing except sadness and pain. It no longer cared about life and death and rebirth. Having lost its reason to live, it existed only as an empty shell. At times, memories would flood relentlessly through its mind. Thoughts of everything it had lost burned hotter than the firebird could withstand. Pain as bad as that of the crash would rack its soul again. It would scream out in agony over and over, unable to escape the madness. It felt despair and anger, longing and guilt. It loved and it hated and it loved to hate. The 
fragment of its heart, which still remained cracked and fractured once more, it cried out endlessly as it was sundered in half again. The phoenix longed only for an end to the torment. Even without a body, it could feel as much pain as before. The only escape was when it avoided all feeling and thought, for only in nothingness could it survive another day. Time and time passed, but the immortal phoenix felt none of it. It knew that if it wanted to live again, it would have to let go of what it lost. But just the thought of doing so sent it spiraling into the abyss once more. It no longer knew why it hurt so much, only that it still did. Love was pain, pain bred anger, and anger became hate. And so the phoenix was consumed by the tar black smoke of pure hatred. It fought the darkness, unwilling to become that which had destroyed its soul, and though it pushed the loathing away, it lost all that was left of its form. The madness abated, and the phoenix was able to see clearly for a moment. Turning and looking behind itself, it finally understood what had happened. Though it knew it had been out of control, it still had not realized what it had done. In its pain and fear, it had destroyed the world. Darkness fell, and the night became a cage for the phoenix. It was trapped in the darkness, lost in the shadows of moonlight. It no longer had the will to fight against the pain or prison. Still linked to the shattered crystal, it knew it could never escape. Unable to live, unable to die, the phoenix knew only one way to survive the night. It accepted its fate, accepted the darkness, and made the night its own. A smoke of antipathy which had never left crept into its soul, a gray mist. It embraced the anger deep within, knowing it would never again be the joyful firebird of the past. Its heart had shattered, its body destroyed, its mind fragmented. Yet despite having been through unbearable pain, it had still somehow been able to survive. But for the phoenix, who had known only joy for so long, the anger and hatred was a poison. Now, even its soul was being devoured. For the first time in its eternal existence, the phoenix shed tears of water. Scalding hot, they fell to the ground, hissing and burning the earth. The black smoke rose again, surrounding the phoenix, rising to blot out the sky. The firebird didn't know if it was friend or foe, nor did it care anymore. The phoenix cried. The phoenix died. It felt itself slip away from what remained of its body and rose above the chaos. Looking down, it saw fire rising from the ashes, its body being reborn once again. Vibrant and full of life and color, it was a firebird of the time before the black flame. But the dark cloud descended upon the form, engulfing its light in its darkness. The phoenix watched apathetically as the fire disappeared beneath the heavy smoke. It knew it should care about what was happening, but it no longer felt connected to that place. It looked at the crystalline dust of its heart and knew it would never forget the pain and loss. Yet, broken and scarred, it knew it was finally time to let go. Blazing white, the phoenix turned and flew into the rising sun. Please share this if you know someone lost, depressed, who just lost someone special to them and feels like their world is falling apart, or someone who is trying to learn to live again after their own suicide attempt. I want them to know it is possible to make it through. It's very hard, very, very painful, but it is possible. My sister once told me, you survived. It wasn't a glorious survival, but you did it.